Hi. Um, we can start anyways. Um, so I'm going to break with the Swedish trend a little bit because I'm actually from Germany. Very sorry for that. Um, but I've spent seven years in Sweden, so that makes me kind of qualified. Um, so I have um, a little mission for all of you. I have some plates of yarn here. Uh, two different color schemes. The gray ones are just for you to go all nice, soft, and go like this. Hand them around. So there's some gray ones and brown ones. Hand them around so everybody can get, can get a feel. And I will explain later why they're called plates of yarn. Uh, then I have the red color scheme which are different fibers. So these are different, there's, there's another plate of yarn here, there's a ball of yarn, and then there's another ball of yarn here. I'm Helgi. Oh, hello. Can I do this without the microphone? Uh, yeah, I can hear you. Um, it's not gonna be good on the video, but you certainly can. Okay, okay, just this bit. Can you me. hear El Anki at the back? I can speak quite loudly. Okay. I'm, getting, so, I'm getting some no there from Mr. Phipps. Okay, okay, I'll take it in a second. I'll just hand this out. So here are the red color steam yarns, which your mission is to get about half a meter length off and keep it and hand it to your neighbor and hand it on. Okay? And um, small health and safety, don't hurt yourself. You'll see what I'm saying. Exactly. Okay, good. Oh, yes. Exactly. Right. Just, just keep it with you. Just keep it with you. I will explain later. Yes, go with the other dudes. Oh, very nice. Okay, now we can... Are we all? Okay, good. Um, now, Icelandic knitting, the reason why I wanted to talk specifically about Icelandic knitting is because knitting has a place in all Nordic cultures uh, because sheep and because it's cold. And so all Nordic cultures have made their own patterns and their own, and so Scottish knitting, for example, Fair Isle, is something that's really well known. Um, but in Iceland, I think knitting is the reason that there's a country at all. Um, <laughs> and if you imagine, Iceland uh, was populated from the, about the 9th century, by, and we've heard a bit of history there. And um, they've had a really bad time when they were, again, we're talking about Denmark, they were a Dan Danish province, and they had a really bad time, there was really nothing going on. And knitting um, was something that allowed them to create things that they could trade against uh, things that they needed for fishing, because that's mostly what they ate. Because if you're talking about Norway not having a lot of land, you know, Iceland is uh, really, you can't grow a lot there. So fish is something you can, you can catch, and you can catch fish with things you can get against knitting. So from about the 16th century, um, everybody in Iceland was knitting. It wasn't, it wasn't the women, it wasn't just, it was literally everybody. Farmers were knitting on the way to doing other things. Um, children were knitting um, from the age of about eight. Uh, do we actually have a presentation? No, okay, fine. Um, and and um, I had some numbers in the presentation that might be interesting. So from in the year, so we have the numbers for the year 1624, there were 16,000 pairs of mittens traded, uh, exported. And so those were the numbers. And that's the country that had about out of 40,000 people at the time. And um, so knitting was the one thing that they could always make with not much resource, because sheep could graze anywhere. Um, and the knitting, and that, and I know I have some wonderful examples. Okay, I might just as well talk about them now. Um, knitting in Iceland, bef until about 100 years ago, it looked completely different from this. 
uh, it was really fine. It was knit on one millimeter needles. It, most of the yarn was spun at home. Uh, of course, pure wool. There were no other fibers. How are we doing with the, with the yarns? Are they going around? Good. Um, and they were so fine. And during they were used, uh, while they were used, they were um, actually felted. So it would be more like if you imagine if, if you imagine a, a woolen coat. It would be more like that, the fabric, and it would literally be used for anything. They would make, of course, anything you would wear, even under garments, would be quite scratchy, I imagine. Um, and pillow covers and everything would be knitted, so even tents and things, so, so every fabric would be knitted. Um, now then, to our wonderful models here. Um, we're kind of working up to the one I made earlier. So here's an example of a Nordic pattern, but can you all see that kind of, or should we get them up on stage? Let's get, let's get them up on stage. No, 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 come, come all of you. <laughs> wonderful, who needs a presentation anyways when we have wonderful models, right? So here we have a Nordic kind of pattern, but it's been adapted, and we can see a little sort of change in um, how, how the jumper is, um, is constructed from where, where there's, a, there's a, an edge here, and there's a bit of a um, change there. But So this one has a yoke that goes all the way through, so the construction, and, and that means that this kind of jumper can be made in a week, and it is still now one of the main things that they actually sell in Iceland uh, to tourists and things. And, and so the construction of these jumpers is, um, you make the body, this is actually the one I made earlier, so. <laughs> so you made the body, you made the sleeves, and then you knit everything together and make a wonderful pattern. Um, so, and the middle one, is uh, an original Icelandic one, and I was, I mean, of course, having James modeling one is wonderful. We actually had Helgi, who's busy now, and he would have been able to tell you in Icelandic a wonderful uh, poem that he actually knew that I was asking him to read it, but he knew it. Uh, that is about children, um, okay, now, now you're eight, no, actually, no, no, the poem goes, now you're four. Now you can learn the three important things in life, which are reading, spinning, and knitting. Um, and I can't read it in Icelandic because I don't know the language. Uh, Dan, can you get Helgi? I think we need him more than we need his jumper. I no, 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 but it's fine. If he's busy, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> um, yes, and the final, oh yeah, the wool. Now then, where's the wool? Has it gone all the way through? Okay, good. How, how, how was your general experience with the different balls of your red? What's, what's, do you have any feedback on the fibers? How, how were they different from each other? Did you feel the difference when you were pulling them apart? Do you have? Yes. So the one, the one that's uh, in a plate form is the one that these are actually knitted out of. That's proper Icelandic wool. Icelandic wool, actually, if you do it properly, it becomes waterproof, which is amazing. And it's, um, I hope you're not sweating too much. It should be all right. It's lighter than other wool, and um, it has some amazing qualities. And th these wools are actually unspun, which is why they come apart. So if you're knitting it, it can be a little bit difficult, not for beginners. Um, the second ball was a mix of fibers, but it was spun, which meant it was more difficult to pull apart. And the third ball that was really difficult to pull apart was acrylic. Now, English is a weird language because in English you call everything wool. Everything you can knit with is wool. But Icelandic wool is, uh, is the quality is, is really completely different. And uh, of course, it would be nice uh, if we could try this a little bit, so we don't have time now, but tomorrow I will come back and I'll actually do some workshops in the afternoon. Um, but I will be in a corner somewhere 
and I will have knitting that's already cast on for even a complete beginner. You can come and sit down there with me and try some knitting. <laughs> and um, if you're a little bit more advanced, I can show you continental knitting, because continental knitting and British kind of knitting are actually two different things. And continental knitting is uh, faster because you're missing out on a whole movement. So I can explain you that difference if you're, if you're at all interested tomorrow. Um, and yeah, that's all I have, really. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Thank you again. Well, thank you very much. So you've learned a little bit about Icelandic wool and knitting, and we'll be doing more of that tomorrow. Uh, and, and gentlemen, uh, for that modeling, that was great. Um, so, um, yeah, obviously, all of the curation was designed and organized weeks in advance, and I've known exactly how everything is going to work and all of the theming is spot on and every transition I've been prepared for. Um, so uh, Icelandic knitting uh, seems uh, a perfectly reasonable transition through Helgi, who's quite busy right now because he's our Icelandic beer guy. Um, but then funnily enough, the beer that we are featuring with lunch today, um, it, it comes from a company called Einstock. And um, what's, what's, what's not legit about it is that it was actually founded by some Americans. Uh, what is legitimate about it is that it is actually brewed using fantastic Icelandic water. Um, we